I'm scouring the riverbanks, slowly making my way up the Roper River Channel, and I'm searching for a number of different species hiding both under the water and along the water's edge. Not having much luck in deeper water, I move into the shallows, still keeping a sharp eye out for the crocodiles that may be lurking around, and it's not long until I catch my first animal by surprise. A northern long-necked turtle. But it's not this guy I'm after. I'm after something which is much more cunning. What I like to call nature's underwater raptor. What a guy, Anna. And this little guy will go all the way down to the bottom and he'll hold his breath. When nothing's there anymore, he'll pop up, he'll look around, sharp eyesight, very sharp eyesight. And he'll pick you out before you pick him out. Have a good look around. If you're not here, come back up and resubmerge. He's absolutely beautiful. You can just see juvenile size. You can just see how alert he is. Absolutely athletic for the water. You can see his tail it just fans out, that helps him propel through the water. An absolute beautiful species. It's unfortunate with these guys, although their primary diet is down, mate. their primary diet is fish and frogs. But there's been a reduction in the number of these, particularly through Kakadu region, with the introduction of the cane toad. Such a poor little species on the front that we have. It is absolutely beautiful. You just see, he's attuning to everything. He's just listening, watching, just trying to figure out what I am if I'm a fret. You're right, mate. You're right. You see his nice sharp little claws on him. He just uses those. If he can't get himself into water, boom, he'll scamper all the way up into a tree. Absolute beautiful species. You can hear him just puffing, puffing. He's a bluff animal. He won't bite. He's very calm. Just see, just like a little raptor. Settle, settle. You're okay, mate. You're okay. You see his nice big forked tongue. And what he'll do with that forked tongue is when he's out searching on the prowl, he'll flick his tongue out, take a big flick. What he's actually doing is trying to get all the scent particles in the air, brings them back into his mouth, and those two little tips go up into the Jacobson organ. He can actually detect if there's been, whether it be live or dead food, anywhere within the vicinity of around about 100, 200 metres. So he's absolutely attuned, a perfect hunter out here, out in the territory, right at home. <laughs> 